Hey, what's up everybody, it's Corey. Today, I'm gonna talk to y'all real quick about calling coyotes using hand and mouth calls as opposed to an e-caller. Also, if you stick around to the end of the video, I will share with y'all one of the most effective methods that I've found of bagging a double, even after you've shot that first coyote and the second one took off, how to get them back in. So y'all stay tuned. Before I get into any of the tips and strategies in calling in coyotes, I want to address something that I get all the time and it's why is coyote hunting something that I do? As you can see, this is an area that is prime for raising cattle and it's a way of life out here. Coyotes take out a huge number of livestock, whether it be cattle, horses, uh, sheep, goats, chickens, whatever it may be. We have to keep those predator numbers in check and that's the main reason that I do what I do with coyote hunting. To set yourself up for success, you really have to play the wind, you have to conceal yourself, and you have to sneak into your setup. You can't just go walking through a pasture with the wind at your back, you're gonna alert everything in the woods that you're out there. And speaking of walking through pastures, you can't just go walking through the open, you really have to sneak in, you have to stalk into your setup, because if you don't, a coyote, a bobcat, whatever it may be that you're after is gonna pick you off like that. So be sure that you are using the wind, and you are sneaking into your setup. Whenever you get to the spot where you're gonna start calling, you wanna make sure that you have something at your back, like a tree, some brush, something to where you're not just standing out in an open pasture where something's gonna find you. Now let's talk about calling. Um, whether you are calling with a howler or you're using a mouth call to represent something that's in distress and that's fighting for its life, one thing that's always helped me be successful in calling coyotes is to imagine myself in that scenario. So if I'm using the howler, I'm imagining what's on that coyote's mind, why he's howling and what his intent is. There's invitation howls, there's challenge howls, there's um, warning barks. There's all kinds of things that you can mimic with this call and we'll go over those. So you really have to put yourself in that scenario of why this coyote is vocalizing. Same thing goes for the mouth calls when you're using a distress. Whether you're, um, you know, imagining that you're a rabbit that's in the, you know, caught in a fence and you're trying to get out, or you're caught in between the jaws of a coyote or a bobcat, you want to put yourself in that scenario to make it as realistic as possible. That's extremely corny but it makes it more exciting and it makes you more successful. I'm gonna talk about the calls that I use real quick. These are all some form of Primo's hunting, um, speak the language mouth calls. This, I, and I don't know, it's called the, this one's called the hot dog. This is an open reed and this represents a howler. So essentially, this is to mimic the sound of a coyote who's howling. It could be an invitation bark, a challenge howl, kind of like I already mentioned. The lower down on the reed you start, the more of a mature sound that you're gonna have. The higher that you start on this call, the more um, juvenile sound that you'll have, meaning a lower pitch or a higher pitch, sounding like an older or younger dog. So we're gonna start off with just an invitation bark and howl for a mature coyote. That would be an invitation howl. Now, if you chop that up and do it shorter, it's gonna be more of a challenge howl. And if you do it even shorter and consistently, it is a warning bark and that can really alert coyotes. So you don't wanna do that. And you have to be careful with the challenge howls because some of the younger dogs don't come to that because they're scared. So here is a challenge howl. That could be a challenge, borderline uh, warning howl. I'm not the best at those, and it's such a fine line that I kind of stay away from it. It can be effective though, if you've got a coyote, especially if you're hunting in the pitch black, you've got a coyote that's challenge howling at you. If you do that back to them, it kind of drops their guard, maybe gets them to come out from behind a tree line or something like that so you can get a clear shot. So uh, that's one thing that I've been effective with. I've had a coyote that's howling at me. I mimicked what he was doing and he came on out. All right, now I'm gonna talk about the little dog. This is an open reed howler as well. I think it's much easier to call with this than the uh, hot dog. And 
Uh, this actually mimics more of a juvenile, younger coyote, and I think it's just a little bit easier to use. So that right there would be a form of an invitation howl to call one in. This next call is gonna be the same challenge howl that I did with the hot dog, just with the younger version. Both of these calls are extremely effective. Now, whenever you're setting the stage and you're calling something in, I always like to start, like I said, with those invitation howls. You do maybe one to five, just kind of depending on how you're feeling. You do two, three, four, five of those, and then you just kind of sit and observe for maybe five to 10 minutes. See if anything responds to that. After you've done that, you've at least alerted coyotes. If they don't come in, you've at least alerted them that there are other coyotes in their territory. So the next thing that you would want to do is set the stage that they are in this other coyote's territory and they're eating their food. So for instance, this is going to be a dying rabbit. This call is the catnip. It's very effective for bobcats, but it also calls in coyotes very well. So for a dying rabbit, you want to almost make it sound like a crying baby, only a little bit more shrill. And you just kind of do that for 15 to 20 seconds, take a little bit of a break, 15 to 20 seconds. You gotta remember that these sounds are coming from a potentially a cottontail, which is about this big. So don't overdo it and don't blow the call for too long. Here's another open read call. This one's a little bit harder to blow, but this could be effective for also making a distressed rabbit sound. And you essentially blow it just like you would if you're using the hot dog or the little dog. And You can just make a little bit more of a raspy sound with it and you can kind of play it to either be a higher pitch or a lower pitch and one thing that is extremely effective when calling coyotes in is to give it some rasp and to make a little bit of growl in your throat once you start practicing with these calls you'll know what i'm talking about um, with this little dog you can actually take the barrel off of the open read call and you can have a potentially a jackrabbit or something a little bit bigger that's in distress. You can actually, if you get good enough with one of these, you can mimic the sound of a fawn or a baby calf or something like that. I'm still working on it, but any of those can also be effective. Essentially, you always wanna revert back to that crying baby sound. If you're calling out way out in West Texas or something, you might want to put the barrel on and do the same thing. All right, one of the last calls that I'm going to talk about, this is the Kai-Eye. And on this, it's a closed reed mouthpiece and you can adjust this rubber ring. You can slide it up and you can get a higher pitch. or you can slide it down and get more of that jackrabbit sound that you might want to use if you're out somewhere in West Texas or somewhere out in the, the Southwest where they have those critters. Okay, I told you guys that I was gonna have a tip for you on bagging a double after you've already shot that first coyote that's come in. And it's called the Kai-Eye. This, this call is called the Kai-Eye, but the actual call uh, this specific method is called Kai-Eye and it's essentially a pup in distress or a coyote in distress and this almost always brings coyotes in after you've shot that first one if you know there's another one in the area and it's the sound of a distressed dog and they just can't help but come back in and see what's going on so it sounds on this one it's a little bit harder to play because it's such a small reed you take the barrel off 
it's such a small reed and you just slide your teeth from the bottom to the top while you're blowing the call and it sounds like a hurt dog. You can also do the same thing with the little dog and the hot dog if you don't want to mess with adjusting the ring on this and taking the barrel on and off. You just essentially use your teeth, scrape it along the top and This can be one of the most effective calls, whether you've shot a coyote or you've been calling, you've done a couple howls, you've done some rabbit distress, you've changed things up and you're not seeing anything, maybe try out the Kayai and see what comes in. Hey guys, I hope this was an informative video. Uh, calling coyotes and bobcats is one of the most exciting things that you can do. And it's also one of the most challenging things that you can do. If you have any questions about the gear that I'm using, how I set up, or uh, just any other tips in general, be sure and reach out to me. This is stuff that I love to talk about and I love to share with you guys. Um, maybe one of these days I'll be able to get an actual coyote hunt on video. I do have some thermal hunts in the middle of the night with the digital scope, um, but as far as with a digital camera in the middle of the day, that's extremely challenging and I haven't been able to do it. So thank y'all for checking this out. I'll talk to y'all soon.